Welcome back to the course on audio signal processing for music applications. In the previous two theory lectures, we presented the sinusoidal model, the analysis part. Now, in this uh, third and final lecture, uh, we will finish the topic by talking about the synthesis part of the model, therefore by generating a sound out of the analysis that uh, we did. We will first uh, review uh, the model and the concept of spectral uh, peak and spectral tracks and then we will focus on the concept of sinusoidal synthesis what is also called additive synthesis and then we will finish by talking about the complete system the complete sinusoidal model system that does analysis and synthesis mm, so as we showed in the last lecture the sinusoidal model considers that the sound is the sum of time varying sinusoids and it's expressed by this equation in which uh, the output uh, signal is the sum of uh, a sum of sinusoids of time varying sinusoids so a good way to show the results of the analysis is to plot the frequencies of the time varying sinusoids on top of the magnitude spectrogram of the sound of course each sinusoid uh, apart from the frequency it has also magnitudes and phases which are not shown uh, so, for example, in this plot, here we are sh uh, showing the, the spectrogram of a flute sound that we can listen to. And then on top of that, we are uh, showing these uh, lines, which are the frequency tracks of the sinusoids that have been identified. Um, of course, again, there is much more than that, but that's a, it's a quite uh, good compromise and it gives us a, quite a, an intuitive uh, visualization of the sinusoidal model. But now, from these values, the ones we have analyzed, we want to synthesize the sound. The standard way to synthesize sinusoids is to use uh, additive synthesis. And this is the standard block diagram of an additive synthesizer in which we have uh, a series of oscillators um, each one uh, from an input of a, a given amplitude and frequency it generates a sinusoid a time varying sinusoid and then we can sum all these things together to generate the output but how do we generate uh, each individual uh, sine wave the, the most straightforward way to generate the sinusoid is to use the sinusoidal function directly. So this function that we see here can be easily implemented in a programming language like Python, like uh, you see here. So we can, uh, we can have specific amplitude frequencies to control uh, this, uh, this uh, function. But this is quite expensive, uh, especially when we deal with complex signals in which uh, we might have to call these, uh, these uh, functions uh, hundreds of times and at every sample. So let's propose another way. Uh, we, can, uh, we can use the DFT uh, to uh, do actual to do synthesis. So if we start from the spectrum of a, of, uh, of a sinusoid and do the inverse Fourier transform, so in this equation, we uh, show uh, how to do it. So basically, we start from the magnitude spectrum of the sinusoid and the phase spectrum of the sinusoid, and we just take the inverse uh, DFT of that. Um, so here, uh, the plots show a very special case in which we would have the spectrum of uh, a sinusoid that has one of the discrete frequencies of the DFT or, or of the, the FFT. So we just have one value, and then we just take the inverse DFT of the whole array, and we get this nice uh, looking uh, sinusoid of length uh, 64. Too bad that things are not that simple. This only works for these uh, frequencies that have a very discrete uh, frequency, one of the DFT ones. Um, but we know uh, also how to uh, represent sinusoids that uh, might have uh, frequencies different from these discrete frequencies. Um, so such a sinusoid does not have a, a single spectral value. It has values for all frequencies, values that depend on the window that we consider. And then to generate a sinusoid in the frequency domain, we have to generate the transform of a window and place it at the right frequency, amplitude and phase. 
So in here, this equation expresses this idea that the, the magnitude spectrum of the sinusoid is in fact the magnitude spectrum of the window shifted to the right frequency and multiplied by the right amplitude. And again, the phase spectrum is also the phase spectrum shifted to that particular location. And the plots show two examples of two different windows. So the same sinusoid with uh, a different window applied to it, uh, of course, is expressed with different uh, magnitude and phase spectra. And then when we take the inverse of that, we get a nice looking uh, sinusoids, uh, of course, with the uh, window applied to them. But in the time domain, uh, all samples have the same weight. Uh, and one great advantage of the frequency domain is that not all samples have uh, the same weight. So we might take advantage of that in order to make this uh, whole process a little bit uh, more efficient. Um, for example, this uh, emphasizes the idea of the main lobe of these uh, windows. The, those samples, the samples of the main lobes, are the ones that carry the most weight, the most amplitude. So in the, the examples before with the Hamming and the Blackman-Harris, we can now plot just the spectrum of the main lobe samples. And here we see the main lobe samples with a dark red and the rest of the samples with a light red. And then if we just take the inverse DFT of just those samples, of the samples of the main lobe, well, we get these blue uh, shapes, these uh, sinusoids, which from a first look, they look okay, but if we actually measure the signals-to-noise ratio, so basically how this would be distinguished from a real sinusoid, a very, uh, very uh, synthetic sinusoid that would be uh, perfect, we see that the humming window has a bigger signal-to-noise ratio than the Blackman-Harris window. Because, of course, the samples of the main lobe of uh, a humming window carry less weight than for the case of the Blackman-Harris. So, in the, in the humming window, the signal-to-noise ratio is 63 dB, and in the case of the Blackman-Harris, it's very good. It's 102 decibels. So, basically, the, the distortion or the noise is insignificant for audio applications. So it's clear that the Blackman-Harris is a good choice uh, for generating sinusoids in the frequency domain. We just need eight samples, which are the main lobe of uh, Blackman-Harris has eight samples, and if we just take those eight samples and do the inverse, we can generate a sine wave as long as the FFT uh, we have. And then, uh, if we want to generate several sinusoids in the spectrum, we can just generate several main lobes. So from this equation, we can see that the sum of sinusoids in the frequency domain is the sum of main lobes, the sum of the main lobes of these uh, windows, in this case of the Blackman-Harris windows, because as we will see, uh, is the one that we'll be choosing. So, in this uh, example, we uh, are generating three sine waves, one at 1000 Hz, another at 4000 Hz, and another at 8000 Hz. So, we place the main lobes of the windows in those locations, each one with a different amplitude. We also uh, generate the phases for the, those main lobes, and we can just take then the inverse DFT of this spectrum, of this combined spectrum. And we get a signal which is in fact um, the sum of these uh, three sine waves, of course, multiplied by a Blackman-Harris window. Um, okay, and then we can put together an analysis synthesis approach using this idea. So we start from uh, a sound, a fragment of a sound, in this case uh, an uh, oboe sound. Then we compute the spectrum, we find the locations, and this we can use any window, any uh, DFT size, any FFT size, so it's the whatever is appropriate for the analysis. And then we basically uh, do an additive synthesis approach 
in the frequency domain by generating main lobes from these uh, cross values, from these peak locations. The FFT can be a different size, the window in this case is a different one because we, we are using a blackmon Harris window, and then we do the inverse of that. And hopefully this resynthesized sound is identical to or similar to the original one, of course with now the idea that we have a blackmon Harris window uh, applied to that. But we have one problem, and, and that's the problem of overlap at in the process of uh, synthesizing. The blackman harris window uh, requires a big overlap. If we want to generate a time-bearing signal, the overlap of a blackman harris should be very high, even bigger than one-eighth of the, of, of the window length. Um, so the solution is to undo the blackman harris window and apply a window whose overlap factor is a little bit better. And uh, this is a, a, a proposed approach that is commonly used, which is, uh, as we see in the top plot, is our synthesized uh, signal, which uh, has this blackman harris window applied to that. And then what we're going to do is divide by the blackman harris and multiply by a triangular function. But we're going to do it on not the whole size, but only on half of the size. So in fact, what we're going to do is um, multiply by this uh, third shape. So we will uh, divide by the blackman harris and multiply by the triangulars or uh, multiply by this third sh shape that we see here. And then the result is similar function than the previous one, but now this function, which is half as long, has been multiplied by a triangular uh, function that can be overlapped by 50%, so that's pretty good, so it like, would be 25% uh, of the initial size. Okay, so this uh, is uh, our approach uh, that we will be doing, and in which we can do an overlap of 25%, that's the one we required with this process. So we start with the uh, with the spectrum with the blackman harris uh, uh, windows. Then we do the inverse with the blackman harris, and then uh, undo it and apply the triangular fun uh, function. And that's it. We are done. We can do uh, analysis synthesis uh, using a sinusoidal approach. Like we did uh, with the STFT, we can put it all together into an analysis uh, synthesis system. So we start from uh, X of N, our, uh, our signal, our complete signal. Then we uh, multiply by our analysis window, compute the FFT, obtain the magnitude and phase spectrum. And now we are starting with the uh, sinusoidal analysis. We're starting with the detection of the peaks, detecting the, in the magnitude spectrum, the location and the amplitude and the phase of the peaks and then we can track uh, those peaks in time by uh, applying some of these constraints of continuity of uh, the frequency values so that we uh, we construct sinusoidal tracks so we have a track per every uh, time varying sinusoid and this is our analysis results we have these tracks of uh, sinusoidal values and then we can synthesize with what uh, we just explained in this lecture so we can do it in the spectral domain by generating these main lobes of blackman harris windows which is quite efficient we just need uh, to generate eight or nine samples per um, per sinusoid in the frequency domain and then compute uh, the inverse fourier transform and obtain um, the, the synthesized sound, which we can uh, we can undo the window of the blackman harris apply the triangular function in a way that we have an overlap at process that uh, works at uh, 25% and it reproduces quite well the original uh, sound in some way, or at least a part of it. Let's see an example. Uh, so this is an example of an analysis uh, synthesis using the sinusoidal model. Uh, so this is a sound of a uh, bend deer, which is uh, this uh, turkey's drum, let's just, it's uh, one stroke of it, let's hear that. Okay, and then uh, 
the analysis shows just the, the, the tracks, the sinusoidal tracks that uh, we have obtained. So we see only the, the frequencies of, of them plotted in, in the time uh, frequency space. And then from those, we can synthesize the, the, the sinusoids and hopefully recover the sound. And let's hear that. If you pay a little bit of attention, well, it's not exactly the same, especially in the tack, you can hear some, uh, some difference. And that's what one of the things that we will be uh, trying to work on in the next few lectures. Um, so for the references in these topics, as, as I said, uh, there is uh, not much. Uh, for additive synthesis, there is quite a bit. Um, but uh, you, can, uh, you can look yourself in Wikipedia and again in Julius' uh, uh, online book you can find some relevant material. Uh, and this is all for the sinusoidal topic, at least from a theoretical point of view. We will also demonstrate and do a, a more a programming approach to that. In, uh, in these three lectures we have uh, uh, started from the short time Fourier transform and we have seen how to analyze sinusoids on top of that and this is a, a way to simplify the spectrum so in fact it can be used for uh, compression but at the same time is a, is a very useful representation for many other things as we will see in, uh, in future classes uh, so we'll continue in this direction uh, towards a more useful and higher level representation that capture some of the prominent essence of uh, of a given sound. So next class uh, we will uh, take advantage of some of the characteristics of the sound to apply some more constraint in the model so that hopefully we'll get some uh, other aspects of uh, this analysis synthesis that can be of interest for uh, many applications. So thank you for your attention and I see you next class.